Boeing. I understand that that's real for them, and I understand that it can be presented the same way, but this model of what you guys are doing and the tangibility of it is so powerful that I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I, this would I, if this had been the first thing I heard, it would have changed the whole conference for me. You have made it worth it for me, along with some others, to have been here. And I just want you to know, don't stop. This is great. God bless you. Well, that's a boring financing problem. <laughs> um, so let me just talk briefly you know, about Northwest Farm Credit. Do I have anybody here that has heard of Northwest Farm Credit Services? OK. Um, so if, if you're in agriculture, um, you may have heard of farm credit. So uh, we're a national organization. Um, if you, any state in the United States will have a farm credit. We're all kind of autonomous, all right, but um, every state will have a farm credit. We're Northwest Farm Credit, and so you'll see the states highlighted. We have Alaska, Idaho, Oregon, Montana, and uh, Oregon. Did I miss one? Um, Washington? Yeah. Anyway, so Where's Washington? There. Yeah, Washington. Um, we have 45 branch locations. We have about 700 um, employees. We're a co-op, so our board consists of our customers. And so there's 14 directors, and then we have 188 local advisors. So every branch has local advisors. And again, they're our customers. So everything that we do um, is because the board, our customers, suggest that we do it or allow that we do it. So um, shows here we're 16,000 and growing. We serve only agriculture, so farmers, ranchers, fishermen, forest products. Uh, we do have a country home loan product that if you want a home and X number of acres, you know, we have a product for that, um, and then other cooperatives. We finance almost anything that has to do with um, farming, with the exception of like, uh, Marijuana, we can't do that. Uh, but anyway, uh, real estate financing, we do little operating loans. So those type of loans that you might use a typical credit card for, your annual operating expenses, we call those operating lines. Obviously, if you want machinery, equipment, livestock. Uh, we also offer crop insurance. In fact, I think we're one of the uh, largest crop insurance agents now. Um, and then again, that country home loan product. So back in 2001, we've been talking about the age of farmers, right? So back in 2001, our regulator, which is the Farm Credit Administration, they um, wanted every association to put together a program for young and beginning and small farmers. They didn't care what we did. They just said, put together a program. We need to start telling um, the world that Farm Credit finances young, beginning, and small farmers. Farmers. Fortunately for us, um, at Northwest, our board was very passionate about putting a program together. Don't let it be just about the numbers, like, oh, we have X number of young producers, isn't that cool? No, they were like, put together a program. And so um, they asked me to head that up or create something. Um, back in 2001, we gave it a name, we called it A Vision. And um, I solicited a lot of feedback and said, okay, why, can't, why aren't we making loans to young people? Why aren't we making loans to beginning farmers? And I stopped in our Wenatchee branch and I was talking to the branch manager and I said, and Egg Vision has been extremely successful since 2001. And I said, I think the reason Egg Vision has been so, uh, so successful is because I didn't have a credit background. You know, so I didn't have all these paradigms like, oh, well, you have to have 40% down to, you know, buy a piece of property, or, you know, you have to have, you know, 15 years of experience. It's like, I didn't get any of that stuff, right? I just knew what I, you know, like my gut feel, I thought you could make it or not, right? And so when we started putting together underwriting standards, it's like, wait, you can't expect 35% down from young people or a beginning farmer. This needs to change, and oh, you know, they're, I'll say debt to asset ratio, you know, how much how much debts do you have compared to your assets? You know, they can't be at 30%. These are people that are buying stuff. So we were able to change quite a bit of those things um, to make it easier for us to make loans. So 
typically in before a vision if you came in and you didn't have that 35 percent down or you you know didn't have a lot of management experience or you know your your balance sheet only had maybe a pickup truck on it we would say no and it was like okay well that's why the average age of our portfolio is 59 that's what, what it was for us back in in 01 so we changed our underwriting standards we uh changed the rate we said, well, typically we're a risk-based lender, which means based on the risk, we're going to charge that interest rate based on your risk. Well, that's not going to help somebody if we have to charge you this high, high interest rate just because you're a little higher risk loan. So we made that change. Um, we wanted mentors. Um, in other words, our, our credit officers that have been around for a while that really could become trusted advisors to kind of help you, you know, with some of the questions that you might have have um, my background again it wasn't in credit I have an education degree from Gonzaga um, so I thought education has to be a big huge piece of this thing right and so um, I cre we created a young and beginning producers conference that we allow people to come into I put together understanding financial statements because who understands those balance sheets I know I sure didn't until I you know got the opportunity to learn um, how can we encourage that well let's give them money for doing it so now we can reimburse folks if they attend some education type classes. I can reimburse them for their gas, their food, their lodging, their registration fee. Um, technology, I want to encourage technology. Technology is changing. We saw the drones, right? Um, again, I just came out of the Wenatchee branch this morning and Alan, our branch manager, was saying that he's big. His portfolio is a lot of fruit, a lot, you know, big fruit industry portfolio here. He's saying, you know, technology um, is the way of the future. I mean, he's kind of starting to get nervous with some of his um, Apple producers that are they going to be able to move into that next um, technology phase where you have this piece of equipment that's going to start picking apples based on sizes. Because if you have too big of apples, you know, they're hard to market because they have to be a certain size. Well, technology is going to come in and start picking those right size apples for you and, you know, doing all this type of stuff. And so anyway, we're encouraging technology. So if our a vision customer buys a computer, an iPad, a printer, um, a laptop, a GPS system, whatever, I can reimburse them some money for that. So again, just trying to encourage ongoing education and technology. Um, we also, I just kind of passed it there, have a RateWise program. What that is, is if folks sign up for RateWise and they start taking classes, whether they're a customer or not, and they send me what they attended, like, a, a, a pretty easy, so just take a picture of that little sign-in sheet or take a picture of your name tag or something, um, you're accumulating credits. And so then when you come to Farm Credit for a loan, if you have X amount of credits, I can reduce your interest rate for three years based on the amount of credits. Again, just everything we can do, anything we can do to try to encourage ongoing education. This is how you get into egg fission. So it's one of those three ways. Um, young, 35 years of age or younger, that's one way, right? These are ores. Um, beginning means that you've been farming 10 years or less. Now, a lot of our folks say, oh, I've been farming since I was this high. No, that doesn't count. When did you start taking on the management risk? When did you start having your own little operation? Um, when did you become legally liable on a loan? That's where I'm counting the 10 years, not, oh, I, you know, I started driving tractor when I was 12. That doesn't count. Um, small <laughs> is your annual gross farm income is less than 250,000 or less a year is considered small in this program. So one of those three ways. And again, we have an outreach focus, which is how Vicki and I just so connected is when she asked, what do you do? I said, oh, I have this egg vision program. And oh, we outreach to veterans. And it was like, ding, 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 OK. Um, so we outreach to military veterans, minorities, a um, lot of local producers now um, that we're outreaching to can be put in our egg vision program because there's a lot of folks that are starting to do the, you know, the direct um, um, selling to folks. So farmers markets, CSAs, those type of things. Here's the, a little bit more on that rate wise program. So learn and earn. Um, as you accumulate credits, again, we're, we're able to discount that interest rate by either 25 basis points, which is a quarter percent, or a half a percent, or 75 basis points. 
based on how many points you accumulate. Again, you do not have to be a customer. Um, just go out to northwestfcs.com slash ratewise and register, and you can start accumulating credits. And then if someday you do come to farm credit for a loan, um, you know, you can apply those credits and we can help reduce your loan. So um, that is that. Um, I wanted to spend just a couple of minutes because I get so many phone calls because I'll say, do you have a business plan? And they'll say, no. And I'll say, okay, put together a business plan for me. And the reason I wanted to put a business plan, and it doesn't have to be formal, and whatever you do, go, don't go out and spend a bunch of money to have somebody put your business plan together for you, okay? Because it really needs to be yours. Um, but what I have found is those people that will take the time to at least put a little bit of a business plan together are the ones that have a better chance of success than the ones that won't even take the time to put something down on paper. So that's, that's why I require it. But basically, um, once you start thinking about getting a loan, make sure you have it again. It doesn't have to be formal. I'm not looking for some five-page business plan. You know, um, have a business plan, put a balance sheet together, again, just a listing of your assets and your and your debts. I'll want two or three years of um, tax returns. I'm gonna ask you to put together a projected cash flow budget. What that is, is you're gonna take a look at your farming operation and you're gonna project out your expenses for the year. And then also your projected income for the year. It's just a projection. These things never come true. Um, but they're a really good document for you guys, as well as us, but mainly for you guys to really think through those expenses. Because typically what I tell folks when they put together, when they say, okay, expenses, I'll put those down, and income, I'll put those down, and, okay. and I'll say, okay, you put that projected income down, now cut it in half. And they go, what? You want me to cut it in half? And I said, you would not believe that first year, you never will get the income that you project. Don't ask me why, but Murphy's Law happens. Vicki and I, our first year with our learning farm, it's a learning farm, right? Oh my gosh. What, 4,500 plants? The, the ground hadn't been touched in years and years and years, so weeds were growing rampant, and we thought that we could keep up with the weeds with just a few people. <laughs> and so our 4,500 plants, weeds took over, and I don't know how many we ended up with at the we end. We had a lot of zucchini. Had a lot of zucchini, <laughs> yeah, we did. So, you know, we look at it as like, what a great learning experience. It's a learning farm, right? And oh gosh, this year is so much different than last year. But again, it's just a perfect example of where, yeah, we put together this projection of what was gonna happen that first year with 4,500 plants. Yeah, not so much. Um, if you're gonna purchase some real estate, we need to see that purchase and sell agreement with it. So when you um, are putting together your business plan, this is just what I would like you to do. Um, ask yourself, where do you wanna go? What do you want to do? Um, like you talked, um, who did you talk about today? Um, the, 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 oh, the, Lowerman. Yeah, Lowerman. Yeah. Um, you know, he had, he had like 10 different diversified operations. He was going to start out with the gate on, right? Um, so just make sure that you, you know, have a good idea of what you want to do. And then how are you going to get there? And then who's going to be involved? Is this you? Is this you and your spouse? Is it you and your kids? Are you going to have a partner? Um, you know, what, what exactly is it? And then what resources are needed? Are you going to need financing? Um, are you going to need any other resources to help you um, get this? Yeah. What about existing operations that are, uh, that are veteran uh, owned but need help to kind of take the jump to the next step? Is this something that, that falls into that category? So an existing operation? Um, they, uh, he's, he's a veteran in my region. I, well, he's more than that. I put him in the military. Uh, uh, he's got a goat farm, and, um, he's, uh, and he works on another farm, and he's trying to make it. And he's always kind of right on the edge of disaster, but he's hung in there, and he's got probably uh, 70 maybe, 70 goats, 80 goats. Um, he, sell, he sells them for meat, he sells them for breeding, 
um, and he sells them for milk production to other people who want to raise uh, milk goats. But my question is, I'm thinking of him a lot when you're sure. talking. Is there something that I can do with this program to help him uh, kind of break through, you know, to success? He's on. Does he need financing to go to that next level? I would say yes. So, does he have a market for that next level? He, yes, he does. Okay. So. He's proven that already. So, is his gross egg income less than two hundred fifty thousand? Yes. Okay. So he would technically qualify, right? It sounds like it. Yeah. 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 So that would be, so he would be somebody that we could sit down and take a look at. Okay. Okay. And this is what I would want, okay, and this is what I would want him to do. I would want him to think about that expansion okay. and what he needs to go to that next level. Yeah, his biggest problem is infrastructure, you know, you know barns, fencing, you know, the kind, those kind, and, and because he's poor, right. he, he, he makes do with everything and anything. And, uh, and I've even helped him with some things myself. Some things like that. Yeah, and the other thing, so what you see up here with farm credit, uh, I mean, obviously the program with all the waiving of fees and all that kind of stuff, that's farm credit. But the business plan and the things that you need to put together to get there and the tax returns and the balance sheet, that kind of stuff, that's going to be no matter what lender you go to. Okay, so keep that back in mind. You do not have to come to farm credit, okay? And a lot of times, one of our great, great partners um, is the Farm Service Agency. The Farm Service Agency um, is someone who is a great partner for um, maybe a loan that we can't do. And I'm not saying we can't do your friend's loan, right? But the Farm Service Agency is always a great place to check to. One of the reasons is they're going to have the lowest interest rate around because they're government subsidized and we can't compete with their interest rates, but they can't compete with us. So if somebody walked in and they know us, we partner with them all the time, they know what we can and can't do. And so they'll look at that and say, yeah, you probably should go to farm credit, right? Um, but if they if they go into them first and they look and they kind of go, oh yeah, this is probably something farm credit can't do. By all means, I always tell people, go to the Farm Service Agency as you can because their interest rates are so much lower than ours. But they have a nice program too, especially if you're a friend, and the way I was headed there, they have a program called their microloan program and it's $50,000 or less. So if, if your friend needs 50,000 or less in financing, they're a great place to go because their interest rate is gonna be, be we, we can't touch it. So. Um, here's just a couple more things. Get clear about why you want to farm. Um, what do you hope to achieve with your farm? Let your values guide you and just share your vision with others. So don't keep it in a little nutshell. You know, talk about it, talk through it. Um, you know, again, these are the people, if you take the time to do this business plan, again, I'm not looking for a 12 page formal business plan, right? But these are the people, if you're willing to spend a little time doing this. Um, you have a better chance of success than the people that I call, you know, what they call and say, I've never farmed, but I've always wanted to farm. Um, I said, okay, we well, put together a business plan and I never hear from them again. I'm thinking to myself, good, because I probably couldn't have done anything with them anyway. You know, that's kind of, you know, my way of figuring that out. Oh, that must have been the last one. Oh, it's not. Um, marketing strategy, you might be the best <coughs> grower here on the east side of the state, but if you don't have a market, it's not gonna help you, right? So make sure you know who you're gonna sell your product to. Um, figure out your labor, right? There's a lot of labor issues. So as you expand, as you start doing these type of things, make sure that you have have labor figured out there. Um, who's gonna, who's gonna, are you gonna, if they're apples, do you have a warehouse? You know, what, what's gonna be your um, production side of it? And then they can fig figure out your financial strategy. So are you gonna are you gonna have some capital needs or are you gonna have some financing needs, um, etc. Final tips: keep it simple. Make sure it's yours. Don't pay a lot of money to go have somebody do it for you. Um, schedule some time to plan. Um, don't do this nice little business plan and then put it on the shelf and never look at it again. Okay? It's always evolving. It's always changing. Um, keep the plan alive. Update it as needed.
So here I'm just talking about, there's the farm. I don't have time to go too much into this, but we do partner with the state um, of Washington with the beginning farmer program. So when you get to the point um, that you might need some financing, um, we'll work with the state on that to help do the lower interest rate. And then the Farm Service Agency, this is one of the best programs, partnerships that we're doing with FSA, where the customer only has to put 5% down, FSA loans 45%, and then we loan the other 50 So that's a great partnership. Um, if down payment's gonna be an issue, because even we need, if you call me and you say, how much down do I need? I'm gonna tell you, we have to, from regulatory standpoint, I need 15 to 20% down. If that is gonna be an issue, then I'm looking for a partner to help us, okay? So we probably should take five minutes if we can and talk about the state chapter. Did I start it? Um, you guys, as a state, now have a Farmer Veterans Coalition chapter from the state of Washington. Uh, this is an umbrella organization that works between uh, growing veterans uh, the Veterans on the Farm, uh, the Washington Farm and Veterans Affairs, Veterans Farm and Oregon, and a few other veterans and ag partners around the state. Uh, this will be a one-stop shop opportunity to connect your veterans and the veterans that you work with uh, directly into what we've talked about today, uh, which would be the pillars of uh, education, training, support, uh, finance, and uh, actual land acquisition. Um, so. We feel like this is a really, really important thing for Washington, for both our veteran community and our agricultural community. Um, and this is the Washington State chapter of Farmer Veteran Coalition. And if you are a veteran, or even if you're not a veteran, you're just interested in supporting it, we encourage you to get online to the FVC.org and register as a member, it's free, um, but it will help us be able to deliver more information and programs to Washington State. But as a local chapter, as a state chapter, um, that really um, helps us because now we can be at the table when those decisions are being made federally about our veterans' benefits in agriculture. So um, this group is very politically active in Washington, D.C. about veterans in agriculture. So we're really excited about that. We provide some uh, uh, amazing um, loans, uh, micro loans, small loans, 0% interest through Kiva, and also some grants uh, each year. They have a, a, a foundation or endowment fund that provides grants. So just locally, we've had a couple, Owen Larman was a recipient yeah, of one of the grants, but also one of our uh, farmer vets in Colville, uh, Bob Gum, was also a recipient of one of their grants. So What's it called? Farmer, farmer Veteran, Veteran Coalition. And they're the ones that the film that I talked about, was that was about them and, and really made, uh, based off Michael Warman's work. And he's the one that I spoke to on the phone. So now we are over in Washington State, the three of us, kind of put our heads together and said we need to get Washington in on this and it had just happened we just got finalized today, today. today. Yeah. Wow. the other cool thing that farmer veteran coalition has is the homegrown by heroes label so if you are a farmer and you are selling your if you're a veteran farmer and you are selling your product there's a really cool label called homegrown by heroes that you can put on your product um, and I'll tell you, that there has been studies that show how much more you sell because people want people want to buy from vets. I mean, they just do. If they see this homegrown, you know, heroes label, it's like, and right, you're at a farmer's market and you're kind of looking like, oh, do I want these carrots or do I want these? Homegrown by heroes. I'm going to buy those. So, um, but it doesn't just have to be farmer market stuff. I mean, we have. We have examples of a lot of people that are using this home grown by heroes label, but that is something free from the former veteran coalition is that he will provide you with those labels. So we have to so we agree, yeah, Yes, so we agreed to three objectives. Hopefully we hit those. Um, please questions and answers to see one hand. I two questions. So you said the 12 week program, what's the cost on that or the average cost on that? Well, we have scholarships for vets, but it's $125. So, oh, but, but we, we And it's one night a week. And yeah, 12 weeks is one night a week. It's not. You know. <coughs> and then how do you apply for the scholarships? Uh, when you enroll in the program, there it asks if you're a veteran, and I call you and I say, do you need a scholarship? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you located? Are you in Wenatchee? You're in Wenatchee. So if she applied for the extension out here, would that still be the same? Uh, yes, we we okay. actually are providing scholarships throughout the state as long as the class is being offered, and it is being offered over on the west side, um, and then of course um, in Spokane. We are trying to. We're working right now on being able to, to offer it satellite or 
some other electronic way because we know that there are small rural communities that are not able to do cultivating successfully. Teleconference. Yeah, I know. Yep. We're yep. working on it. Yep. Are you um, with the rate wise and then the, the kind of um, uh, challenging them with writing their own business plan and that sort of thing? Is there some components of that education piece that prepares them to do that? Yes. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. So through the 12 weeks, um, bring in your idea. You're actually, through that 12 weeks, you're working on your business okay, model. Great. And then, you know, in the end, you might not have it complete, but you've got a very solid idea now of what you want to do. Yeah. And then we can help you finish that. And we actually have um, veteran volunteers that, ha that come in and will help you sit down with you individually and help you finish that business model. I just have a comment. You're not on the evaluation sheet, so I can't give you a 10 out of 5. Yeah. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Maybe they're title. Maybe they're getting the 10 out of 5. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, contact information for all three of us. Um, there is information on the best in the farm example, as well as the veterans farm majority. Um, gladly, if you have any questions and you want to get hold of Wendy Wookie or any of the other partners that are veterans back around the state, I'd make that connection happily. Will this um, be on the, uh, the download? This will be on the download again, just tba.law.gov, look for serving as a student conference, you'll have access to the whole PowerPoint presentation. And uh, started with a thank you, and I'll end with a thank you, thank you very much for your yeah, time. Thank and, uh, you. For all of you.